Welcome to that lecture online, and now we're going to look at some calorimetry. And we're going to start out by seeing how much heat it would take to take a cube of ice, 100 grams of ice, and raise it up to 0 degrees centigrade, then to change it from ice to water, then to raise the uh, water, still 100 grams of course, from 0 degrees centigrade to 100 degrees centigrade, which is the boiling point of water, how much heat it takes to then convert it to steam, and then how much it would take then to heat up the steam by another 20 degrees centigrade. All right. For the first part right here, it will require this amount of heat. So the amount of heat is equal to mc delta t. So there's no phase change involved here, simply a change in the temperature. The mass, 100 grams. C for water is one calorie, uh, one calorie per gram per centigrade degree. Now, that's not quite true because that's what, what is for water. For ice, of course, it's not the same. So for ice, it's actually a half a calorie. Uh, per gram per centigrade degree and of course the difference in the temperature would be 20 centigrade degrees so this cancels out grams cancels out and we're left with uh, calories and so that would be 0.5 times 20 which is 10 times 100 that would then take 1000 calories so take ice a block of ice that's 100 grams which is about four ounces to zero degrees centigrade for minus 20 takes about 1000 calories all right, now how much heat would it take to melt that block of ice? So for that, we have to take into account that we have M amount of ice, so that's the mass, times the latent heat of fusion. Now we still have 100 grams, and the latent heat of fusion for ice going from ice to water is 80 calories per gram. Notice there's no dependency on the temperature because the temperature doesn't change. Grams cancels out, so this leaves you with 8,000 calories. So it only takes 1,000 calories to get it from minus 20 to, a, to uh, minus 20 C to zero C. It takes 8,000 calories to melt it. And that's why ice is such a nice cooling mechanism, right? If you want to put a bunch of ice in your cooler, keep your drinks cool, you can see that while the ice is melting, it's absorbing an enormous amount of heat. Now, how much heat does it take once the ice is melted, turn into water, to get all the way from 0 degrees centigrade to 100 degrees centigrade? So again, we use this equation right here, where Q is equal to mc delta T, still 100 grams. Now, C is indeed 1 calorie per gram per centigrade degree. And of course, the difference in the temperature now is 100 centigrade degrees. So the centigrade degrees cancels out, grams cancels out, it left with calories, and it looks like in this case, it takes 10,000 calories. That's kind of interesting when you think about it, 10,000 calories. It takes 8,000 calories to melt 100 grams of ice from when it's at zero degrees centigrade into water. It takes 10,000 calories to bring it all the way from zero to 100 degrees centigrade. So it's almost the same amount of heat to melt the ice as it does to then take the water that's now at zero degrees centigrade and bring it all the way to the boiling point. So you can see again how much heat it takes to melt ice. Okay, now looking to see how much heat it will take to completely take it from boiling point into steam. For that we need Q equals M times L sub V. Now the V here stands for vaporization and so we're talking about the latent heat of vaporization. Uh, the mass is still 100 grams and the latent heat of vaporization is 540 calories per gram. Notice there's no dependency on temperature here because when you're taking boiling water and turn it into steam, the temperature doesn't change. It will stay at the same temperature. Grams disappears, and here you can see that 100 times that, that's 54,000 calories. So notice it only takes 10,000 calories to bring the water from zero degrees centigrade all the way up to boiling, it takes more than five times as much to take the boiling water and turn it completely into steam. So you can see that turning water into steam takes an enormous amount of energy. Likewise, if you then take steam and turn it back into water, it releases an enormous amount of energy. And so that's why steam is so dangerous, because when steam hits your body and then condenses into water, it releases an enormous amount of heat. So you always got to be very careful with that. But anyway, 54,000 calories to complete a turn to steam. Now, how much more heat do you need to turn the steam from 100 degrees centigrade into steam at 120 degrees centigrade? All right, for that, we need Q is equal to mc delta T. The m is still 100 grams. Now, what's the C for, uh, the C for steam? And it turns out it's almost the same as this for ice. For ice, it's 0.5. For steam, it's almost 0.5. It's actually 0 0.48. So 0 0.48 calories per gram. Um, 
uh, per degree centigrade. And then, of course, you multiply times 20 centigrade degrees. And uh, grams cancels out, centigrade degrees cancels out. We're left with calories. So this is equal to, it looks like, 960 calories. So 960 calories. So you can see for the same temperature change, the amount of heat required is almost the same as it is for ice as it is for steam. All right, this gives you kind of a good idea of how heat will change either the temperature or the phase of water. Uh, the temperature here from minus 20 to zero, 1,000 calories, 8,000 calories to melt it, 10,000 calories to bring from zero to 100. 54,000 calories to actually turn into steam, and then 960 calories then turn to steam and heat it up for another 20 degrees centigrade. So that gives you a pretty good idea. Now that you know that, we'll look at some more problems involving the calorimeter.